Sal Berry and Jim Howard. This is the Puck Junk Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Puck Junk Podcast, Sal Berry. Today I'm joined with Jim Howard, who will hopefully be joining me on a few more of these podcasts in the future, and also Jim is the guy who wrote and performed the opening intro theme that we're now using for this podcast. Now, just to be clear, we're talking about Jim Howard who writes for Puck Junk, not Jim Howard who plays for the Red Wing. Jim, how are you doing today? Uh, Hang on, man. This Pidgey won't stay in the stupid Pokeball. Uh, Oh, not you. Not you too. No, no. Another... (laughs) Another friend lost to the alluring charms of Pokemon Go. But anyway, so the, the, the Pidgey is being disobedient. Don't worry, it ran away, as oh. they do. Next time, throw a hockey puck at it, knock it out, and then you could just scoop it up in the Pokeball. No, I, I, I think that one of the updates they should have, you should be able to hook up the old Nintendo Zapper to your phone and just be able to shoot any Pokemon that you don't want. Just get it out of the way. Just shoot the thing like Duck Hunt. Yeah, that would be, that'd be kind of fun but then you'd have to like i don't know you'd have to you know probably cost fifty dollars to make an attachment to plug into your iphone that (laughs) you know it'd be it'd be ten dollars attachment on a droid phone and you know seventy five dollars on an iphone because it would be colored white hey that's money right there i don't want to talk about ipads or apple products or pokemon (laughs) i want to talk about hockey trading cards um or specifically trading coins uh Jim sent me a box of these uh, Pinnacle Mint cards and coins from 1996-97, which prompted one of my friends to say, what, does he hate you? Why would he send you those? (laughs) So uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. So uh, you have a bit of an infatuation with this product, so why don't you talk about it for a bit and uh, clue us in. Well, uh, I always like a good treasure hunt. Um, if uh, if you ever paid any attention to um, getting slightly off topic again, uh, the uh, Canadian Club whiskey uh, uh, treasure hunts that happened back in the uh, 70s and 80s, uh, there were people that were going all over the world trying to find uh, cases of whiskey that were hidden by the company. And many of them still haven't been found today. And things like that just fascinate me. It's great to hear, you know, when, you know, some intrepid explorer is like wandering around in the Arctic and then comes across a case of whiskey and is like, what the heck? Uh, so then, you know, I came across this. Uh, I was digging through uh, old uh, hobby boxes of hockey cards from the uh, 90s and early 2000s and saw that this Pinnacle Mint was, you know, going for about 20 bucks. And I was like, hey, Sal needs this, and I need one too. So I uh, bought a couple of these guys, and uh, one of the uh, main things is that uh, while you do get a couple of cards with them, uh, you also get a coin in every pack. And the vast majority of the time, you're going to get a brass coin that's got uh, the player or a player of the set, and there were 30 uh, associated with it uh, for this particular set. And you've got uh, their face on that, the logo um, of the team they play for, their name on the back. It's got the the logo of the of Pinnacle Mint and that sort of thing. But then, like Pinnacle did, you know, loving gimmicks in the 90s, like putting cards in cans and cards inside cards. They, of course, wanted to make people go out and buy as many as possible. So they had special uh, nickel silver coins, which you should have gotten at least one in every box. Uh, Then there were solid silver coins, which were certainly a little bit more rare. I think there was maybe about 500 of those made. Uh, There was a gold plated coin that you could also find in each of them. Probably a little bit rarer than the silver. And then there were solid gold coins. And of course, everybody wants that. But you wouldn't find them in these boxes. You would only get them via redemption card. And uh, that was so that people couldn't sit there and, and gauge the weight of each pack and say, oh, this one's heavier. It's probably got a gold coin. I never actually thought yeah. about weighing the packs. I guess they would have been doing it by then. But just to clarify on a point that you made earlier, Jim found boxes of these on a website for $20 for an entire box. Mm-hmm. And back in the day, they sold for three ninety nine per pack. There mm-hmm. were, uh, what, 24 packs in the box? 
Yep. What I found funny, well, a couple of things. Just going back to 96, 97, so a couple of podcasts ago, myself and, and Tim, we talked about the Fleer Metal Universe set, which I think was a crazy outlandish over-the-top set. <laughs> oh, yeah. But what was funny about, at this point, I'll tell you this. Back in the day, I did not collect Pinnacle Mint. I had no desire to, because I think at mm-hmm. that point, the companies were like, we've done hockey cards to death, what else can we do? And it was mm-hmm. just like, coins. And I'm just like, no. Like, I, I I, had no interest in coins. Like, I had no interest in coin collecting. Mm-hmm. I know if you put hockey logo or hockey player on a coin, well, it's a hockey item, but... I just, I didn't have interest back then because it was just like, you draw the line somewhere, right? Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what it is. I'm guessing you didn't play golf back then. Correct. I don't play golf today, though I'd like to try it. Okay. Well, uh, if you go on to eBay and you look for these coins now, a lot of them will actually be labeled as golf ball markers, as in people will use them to mark their golf ball on the green so they can pick their ball away and then their, their friend can play through without having to mess it up. Typically, golfers do this with a quarter or a dime or something like that. But yes, sometimes these are actually labeled as golf ball markers on eBay. That's interesting. I wonder if any of these guys pictured like Chris Chelios or Felix Potvin when they play golf, if they use their own pinnacle mint coin to mark their golf ball. I, I would love that if that was the case. I, you know, if he was playing in a tournament or something like that and gets a great shot, instead of throwing the ball into the crowd, flip the coin. Nice. So... One thing I found kind of annoying with this set, at least from opening a box, each pack, you get one coin, and the coin comes in like this plastic tray that you pop it Mm -hmm. out of. You get Mm -hmm. one checklist. Every every pack has the same flimsy little checklist, and I guess that just kind of... Every pack. Every single (laughs) pack. And then on the back, it has like some sweepstake official rules on the other side of that. Mm -hmm. Then you get a card the card with the hole and then you get the card without the hole with the with normally with a bronze team logo the collation Mm -hmm. on the cards with the holes the cards without the holes the collation on that was fine like i got for the the ones with the holes i got 24 different ones no duplicates for the ones with the holes Mm -hmm. or uh, with the the bronze i got 23 with the bronze team logo and then one with the silver team logo and i guess you get those one in every box but then the coins had like pretty terrible collation where i ended up getting like three or four john van beesbrooks and three or four Felix Potvins, so even though I was pretty darn close to completing the bronze set and the holy set, as you called it, because it has a hole Mm -hmm. in it, not because it's been blessed by a a priest. I don't think anything Pinnacle made in the 90s was holy, that's for sure. Right, Um, (laughs) but, but then like with the coins itself, which I think would be what people were trying to to buy or what what they wanted out of the set, the at least for me the collation was pretty bad. How about with you? Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was not great. Uh, with the holy cards, I got uh, straight twenty four and no duplicates. Now, just as a side here, there's you get uh, per pack you get one holy card, one uh, uh, metal foil card, and you get a coin. Uh, and there's thirty for each, so there's no way you're getting a complete set of anything in one box. You will always have to buy more or learn to trade. So. I just wanted to bring that up. Uh, but you're absolutely right on the correlation. Um, I had a little bit worse on the foil cards. I had five duplicates, actually. And when it came to the coins, I only had 10 individual uh, coins. Wow. I had a lot of duplicates. And I had one silver nickel coin of Petchqua. Oh, that's pretty good. My silver nickel coin was of Keith Kachuk. I think there's more Wa mm-hmm. collectors than Kachuk collectors. Yeah, probably. I think, you know, with the, the number of, of people that were getting this, you know, maybe they were just shooting for maybe their favorite player. Get that set of, of the holy card and the coin, so the coin goes in the hole, just so everybody can visualize this. Uh, and then you can slide it into a protective sleeve or do whatever you need to do with it. He puts um, the coin in the card. That's right. If you put all of the co- uh, holy cards together, you can see a little bit of variation in them, so they're not perfectly cut. 
It doesn't seem like anyway. Although it is kind of spun, fun to spin them on your finger. It kind of looks neat. Uh, but if you're just looking for one particular player, you know, one that's your favorite, then it's, you know, not so bad. Uh, I have to say that my favorite coin out of all of these that I got has to be the Yarmor Yager. Because oh. I don't know that there is any more perfect picture of this bronze glowing image of Yarger in full mullet with the penguin's corporate logo just at his neckline. It is absolutely gorgeous. I will send you a picture of this so that it can go up online so people can see it and enjoy it. Yeah, that looks pretty awesome. Uh, you know, one mm -hmm. thing, though, is that I'm noticing, like, when I put the coin into the hole on the cards, it doesn't, they don't seem to fit really well. They don't fit really well, and it's kind of awkward. Like, you almost need the cards to be the thickness of a jersey card in order for this idea to work. Right. Uh, and I, I don't think know. they did that the next year with it. Because I have the, the 97 98, I have like the bronze set and I have like the holy set, but I don't have the mm -hmm. coins to go into them. Um, but I think those were printed on thicker stock, if I remember correctly. But these are kind of – these are just, like, normal card size. So it's kind of weird because, yeah. like, if you put them into um, – if you put them into the cards, they don't really fit. And then they're kind of lumpy. So then if you put them into pages, it, it's also kind of lumpy. And I could just see that not really looking really nice. Yeah, I haven't bothered putting them into any pages yet, so I wasn't entirely sure how that was going to work out. If you were just trying to get the coins or whatever, you could go to a coin dealer or whatever, and they've got pages that you could slide in, because they're about the size of a 50-cent piece or so. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can get specific you know, pages just for the coins. In fact, I, I imagine if you really wanted, if you were... You know, crazy enough that you really wanted to keep these like super duper mint or whatever, then you would probably keep the coins separate from the cards that they would normally sit in. Yeah, because um, they don't sit in there too well. And I know that coin no. dealers, not only do they sell coin pages, but then they also sell like little cardboard cutouts that you yes. kind of put the coin into and then you put that into the page and then that keeps it from like rolling around and stuff. It keeps the coin upright and that sort of thing. You're right. You're right. You're right. Um, it's kind of neat, but it's hard for me, like, 20 years later to say, oh, I'm going to, you know, hunt down these special pages and, and whatever. Like, I, I obviously, I appreciate the gesture. You, you sent me this box of cards and coins unexpectedly, and it was, you know, kind of just neat to kind of go back in time. And, I, you know, obviously, these are the guys I grew up watching. But then mm -hmm. at the same time, back then, I could just say to myself, how am I going to store these things? And, like, now, just saying to myself, how am I going to store these things? Like, or, or you know, if I was into coins, I'd be like, yeah, I'm going to like display them and hang them up or whatever. But I think, you know, I'm more of a guy who puts things in pages. And then if that doesn't work, I just kind of keep them in boxes. Like with these coins, especially since I punched them out of these little black backings that they come into. And then like when you punch them out of the little black plastic tray that the coins come in, it kind of cracks the tray because it's flimsy plastic just to keep it mm -hmm. from rolling around. So now I'm just like, well, I guess I could put them back in those. But I don't know. Like, I like to store things. I guess I like to look at things. Um, and if I'm not going to look at them, I like to at least store them so that I know that they'll be, you know, in, in good shape. I know you were giving me some advice on handling and, and, and care of the coins. What can you say about that? Um, well, these are brass, and it's pretty old brass at that. Uh, they've been sitting around for, what, 20 years now? Mm -hmm. uh, so, but they've typically, they're kept and sealed and whatever. So they come out pretty shiny, but you notice that uh, if you handle them and, you know, with your, just normal with your hands, and then you set them aside... You come back about a week later, they will look dull and dingy, and that's from the oil on your fingers just kind of rubbing on there and creating a little bit of oxidation. Now, you can clean them off, and that's fine. If you're going to handle them, you know, straight out of the box and then put them into pages and keep them looking pretty or whatever, you may just want to wash your hands the first time and kind of minimize that oil that happens to get there. Hmm. Uh, as uh, I looked at some of the uh, unboxing videos that some people have posted about the uh, set that came the next year, the 97, 98, mm -hmm. and they didn't come in, the coins didn't come in the plastic. You actually got two coins per pack, and they were glued onto a card with airplane glue. And watching people try and peel that off was just, that. there was 
too much of, of, of having to handle and, and manhandle stuff. And then you have to peel the glue off the back of the coin stuff. To be honest, I think I'd rather have the tray. Oh, I'm sure that the, the glue method was cheaper. They probably figured it was yeah. too expensive to do these little uh, these little plastic trays that hold exactly one coin. Though what I like about mm-hmm. those is that, you know, like years later at a show, I'll find these coins in these little black trays, you know, in like quarter boxes mm-hmm. or dollar boxes or whatever. If one thing, it kind of was a nice way to keep the coin... Uh, in good shape and to uh, you know keep people from handling it directly with their their fingers but like you said with the next year when they glued them what is airplane glue is that like that glue that that, that kind of like tacky stuff that you could kind of peel away yeah yeah you, you just kind of peel it away it's kind of rubbery yeah yeah I didn't know it had yeah. a name I, I always called it snot glue because it reminded me of snot well, air, airplane glue is, I guess, you know, you, you find that obviously at hobby shops and people are putting all airplanes together or they're just huffing it and trying to get high. So one or the other. <laughs> Those are pretty much the only two uses for it back in the day. For, for model for model cement or model glue. Yeah. yeah. So I And think, then hockey coins came along. So uh, and then they had another use. Hockey coins. Right. To, to go along with all the other hockey type things that mm. they hockey patches and hockey. um Trying to, trying to think. I wrote an article a couple years ago for Beckett um, about like the n- kind of odd non-card collectibles that came out. Of course, a lot of them were like from the 70s and 80s. But um, sure. Uh, you know, I'm thinking like, uh, well, I know like those coasters, which never actually came out um, in the 90s, and there was like oh, oh, and then there were the the patches that. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, that came out in the early 90s. And then, uh, yeah, I think, like I said, at that point, and then like you said, the cards with the cans and the dare to tear and a lot of the stuff, like at that point, I was just so like done with hockey cards. I, by then I was like into collecting action figures. In one year, Pinnacle put out 50 products. Now wow. that that's across sports, but that is a whole heck of a lot of products. So, I mean, just the, like the coins, they got buried under the cans and everything else. It really did. I mean, they just, it, it was it was overkill. Yeah, I think it was. And they were trying to, at that point, it was so crowded, they were trying to, you know, come up with another idea that would make them stand out. And I think, mm-hmm. it, like I said, at that point, I was just like, whatever, I'm done. I'm checked out. I can't. Yeah. I can't. You know, it wasn't even about, like, being able to complete sets. It was just like... I think 96, 97, I bought Score, I bought Upper Deck, and I might have bought maybe one other set, like Tops or something, if they were even out that year, I don't remember. At that point, yeah, it was just, it wasn't interesting to me then. I think now it's more of a curiosity, especially when you'd like look back at like those crazy 90s with all the stuff that they tried. They're, <laughs> the death throws a pinnacle before they went bankrupt. Right. Well, I mean, back in the 80s, you know, I think cards for sports cards in general were just kind of a little still seemed a little bit of as a gimmick or not a gimmick. Excuse me, not a gimmick. That wasn't what I was looking for. Uh, just kind of a kid's thing, you know, collectible here and there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you might have done it with your, your dad or whatever. I know I did. Um, and then, you know, all of a sudden, like, you know, some news reports came out. Oh, so and so bought the Honus Wagner uh, tobacco card for, you know, hundred thousand dollars whatever and everybody's like oh god could these cards be worth something and then it just blossomed out of control all over the place and the the best thing they could have done is is taken half of the stock that they printed and dumped it in the ocean <laughs> well then every card would have been worth a dime instead of a nickel exactly you yeah know. well hey there, there you go so what do you um, give this uh what do you rate this set at uh either then or now I think uh, like back then I wouldn't have even bothered with it, and I think now it's I put I put it at like a three out of five. It's it's a curiosity, but not like something like you have to. I mean, if you like coins, you know, by all means yeah. buy them. But like, or you know, or if you're an avid golf player, you know, um, <laughs> <laughs> or if you play quarters, remember that? Yeah, exactly. Quarters, that's another good one right there. Oh my yeah, god, that'd be would, excellent. This would be fun. This would be fun to play like quarters. Like if you throw. A, hey, you've played quarters, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bounce quarters, try to get in the cup. 
Right, and what is it? Like, if you bounce the quarter into the cup, then somebody else has to drink. Is it they do a shot or they have to take a sip of their beer? I forgot. They're like different rules. They have to, they're, they're supposed to drain the cup. And the gross part about it is the fact that it's supposed to be a quarter that has probably been around forever and has like a million germs on it. Right. But, you know, this was back in the whenever. I mean, for me, it would have been the mm. late 90s. But I remember like with quarters, yeah, and obviously the more sober you were, the better you were at it. So you could just. Sure. Like, I wasn't that big of a drinker, but like, you know, bounce the quarter into the cup and then just like pick on somebody like Dave, drink, Dave, drink, yeah. Dave, drink. I could always pick on my friend <laughs> Dave because he also is not a big drinker. So it's just kind of fun to, to pick on him. But like, you know, and then if the coin that you land in the cup is a goalie, then maybe that saves you from having to take a drink next turn or something. Sure, make a whole drinking game out of it. It's yeah, fantastic. And, it, and if you if you, you throw a Yager in there, then you have to take like two sips or, you know, mm-hmm. two drinks or cause you, or like maybe three, I don't know, a hat trick, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Make there, your are own. Lot, there are a lot of coin games out there. There's uh, one where you're just trying to throw coins and get it as close to a doorway without going through or to a stair step or something like that. I mean, there's a ton of them out there. It was stuff that kids did before we had the Internet. Wow. I, You know, I never played that game where you threw coins towards a doorway. That sounds pretty sad. Like, was this before Monopoly was invented? Uh, I have I have no idea. But no, because people didn't know, have coins I, 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 back I grew then. up, you know, did, down but... in the south in the woods. So mm-hmm. hey, we didn't even have hockey down here when I was growing up. No, that's that's true. So what would you? Uh, how would you rate this set today or back in the day? Uh, Back in the day, I probably would have said this set was kind of boring because there was a billion other crazy things out there that were overshadowing it, and I probably would have given this set like a two. Looking at it today, honestly, when I opened these guys up, I was actually more impressed by it, and I said, you know what? This is actually fun. I would buy a second box. I'm not going to give this a five, but... I could I could say, all right, I'd buy another box just to try and complete the set if I didn't have anybody to trade with. It wasn't that expensive. There's always the hint that I might get a really good collectible coin, which they go, you know, the silver ones, they go for 20 bucks on eBay or whatever like that. Mm-hmm. Um, if you really want to, you could just go spend the $20 and get the silver coin yourself. But the thing I think is actually the cards. I really like the cards. Uh, now, going into the description of the cards, the holy cards and, and the non-holy cards uh, have the exact same image for each player. Uh, so, you know, Mario Lemieux is number one. Uh, you have an action shot. It's full-figured, full-colored, and then you have a sepia tone of about the chest up, um, usually a, a good facial shot. And uh, that actually looks good. And with when you have the um, the bronze foil on it, uh, I think that actually really makes it pop. It makes it stand out from a lot of the cards that we see today. When you flip on the back, uh, you have, again, a full-size action shot and then a head shot as well. They don't have stats on there. They just have, like, two sentences about something interesting involving the player which is par for the course for a Pinnacle product. Now, granted, these are not the Pinnacles that we know today. Uh, Pinnacle was, Pinnacle, you know, wasted all of its money, uh, the Bass Brothers, I think, who backed it back in the day. Uh, And then it was bought by Panini America, my friends, Panini America. (laughs) We beat again. Yes. Um... And, uh, and they're the ones that are putting out uh, the Pinnacle brand these days. Uh, and they do a similar situation where they've got, uh, they don't really bother with statistics, and they throw something interesting on the back and assume that they put Jeff Skinner over the right city. <laughs> yeah, you know, that does kind of make it kind of nice, these cards, where there are a total of four different pictures on them. So you do get you do mm-hmm. get four good shots of the players, goalies without their masks and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I guess like the base set is at least the base set is 30 cards. It's pretty easy to put together. No rookie cards. I mean, I guess Aginla was... Aginla was the only one that was considered a rookie in this set, but I think, as you mentioned, it wasn't. it's not exactly a true rookie card. Now, you will get, I mean, some of those coins you said are up there. What did you uh, 
find out about the gold coins because I know that's kind of been like a enigma for you. Right. So the the treasure hunt was on for me, and I was just I wanted to say see take a look and see. Okay, you know how much are these gold coins worth? Uh, are they worth more as this product as they are, or are they actually worth more as the ounce of ounces of gold that they were? Because they were uh, printed as 0.999 gold as labeled on the back, supposedly. But here's the funny thing. I couldn't find one. I couldn't even find a picture of one. I couldn't even find uh, the, a picture of the redemption card that you had to send in to do for that, I couldn't find one of them. And I don't know if you've ever seen one at a card show or something like that. Never. But yeah, I, I don't know. So I started going on a manhunt. I started looking for a guy named Dan Shedrick, who was the CEO of uh, Pinnacle, uh, running it for the Bass Brothers for a while. He eventually got fired uh but he actually started pinnacle and score for them mm -hmm. and i found i finally found him on linkedin and i sent him a uh a, a connection invite but i haven't heard anything from him and unless i want to start paying some money to linkedin to get his phone number and actually badger him right it's a bit of a dead end for me but i've never seen one of these gold coins period not even a picture and that's a little suspect to me so I kind of wonder if you flipped over the back of the, the bottom of the box that mm -hmm. the cards came in, mm -hmm. uh, there is a sweepstakes on the bottom of it and you can mail in no purchase required. Um, and they were giving away one of the gold coins and five silver coins. I don't know. I, I honestly, I can't tell you where they are or what, what's happened to them. Now the next year, I have seen some of the solid gold coins of those, mm -hmm. but never of this uh, very first inaugural year. Hmm. There were more. There were certainly more printed of those, whereas I think with these there should have only been thirty coins of gold. Right, and they did exactly one of each gold, or how how, how was that supposed to work? As as far as as I can understand from reading literature, there was only supposed to be uh, one solid gold coin for each player. Okay, so a true one of one. Exactly. But so, you're right. If you want to buy something something costly from the '90s, find one of those guys. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That might that might even because uh, when I think of like costly '90s cards, the only one that really comes to mind, well, at the forefront is the Stanley Cup hologram from '9091. But and those mm -hmm. those I mean I track those on eBay all the time just to see how they do because it's such a such an odd card. But like. Yeah, I, I've never seen any of these gold coins show up mm -hmm. at shows. Um, I've never had anybody email me about one. I've never had anybody talk to me about one. I mean, even now and then, like, like for instance, like that, that so-called Ken Dryden card from the uh, Century Legends set. I don't know if you've, you remember that one. I believe so. That has, like, the, the cyan, the yellow, and the magenta stripes because Dryden didn't want a card made. So they basically, they printed, like, a dummy card that didn't actually have Dryden's picture on it. It just had colored stripes on it. And it, so that way it could be picked out and destroyed, right? Because, you know, sure. they laid out the whole um, they laid out the whole sheet. Some of them still got out. And, I mean, I have I was able to purchase one, and I've had people email me to offer me one, and I've had people, like, say, oh, I got two of them, and allegedly there sure. were only five of those made, and those weren't even supposed to be made. And I've had some, like, interaction with people who have those, who've seen those, whatever. So, it, yeah, it's funny that these have never been a blip on my radar ever like no one's ever brought it up to me i've never seen them i wonder if maybe they advertised that they were going to make them and maybe something just didn't happen at the end i mean that would have been at the end of pinnacle's lifespan or close to it so close they, to it. i mean but they, they did it the next year so they did do gold did. coins the next year they did you can find those hmm I don't know. I mean, it would be pretty crummy if they said, "Oh, we're going to we're going to do this and then they didn't honor it, right? Like if they promised right. you. And I know that like I you know, and I I always wonder I always wonder about that. Like if if they if you go to a card shop, like I'll give you like a for instance, like if you go to a card shop and they say there's one autograph per box, right? And I buy mm -hmm. a pack of cards and I open it and I go, "Cool, I got this autograph. Do you really want to buy a 
pack of cards from that same box. No, not because, really. No, it's, no, it's all I, it's all out. Right, because now you don't have a you don't have a chance. So I, I think it's kind of crummy when companies say they're going to do one thing and then they don't do it. I don't know if Pinnacle would have been the type. I mean, it could have been a production problem. It could have been a lot of things. If anybody knows anything about these one of one gold coins from ninety six ninety seven, you know, definitely let it snow because uh, it's a mystery that needs to be solved. Yeah, uh, I even uh, swallowed my pride and emailed Panini America to ask if they knew anything or if they knew of who I should talk to. And of course, I heard nothing back. So of course, because they don't, cool. they don't really respond. They don't care. <laughs> well, they're not going to care about a set that came out twenty years ago. Yeah, not one that they had anything to do with. That's for sure. Yeah, I don't think anybody that was with Pinnacle back then was with Panini America today. So, uh, any any final thoughts on this before we uh, call it a podcast? Um, yeah, the uh, the the only other coin that really stuck out to me, um, other than uh, Matt Sundin's chin, which about poked my eye out, uh, <laughs> was that uh, Pavel Burr Bure? had just it, it was a remarkable resemblance to Milton Burl. It is hilarious. <laughs> if you have one of those, look at it. And, it looks like Uncle Milty. <laughs> oh dear, I'm try I'm looking at I'm looking at it right now, and just loving loving the detail in that little Canucks logo with all the lines in it. They actually did. They put a lot of great detail into these coins. They did. Yeah, I don't think it went as went over as well as they had hoped. No, but I mean, they were. It was a sh everything Pinnacle was doing was a shot in the dark. They were just throwing money left and right and hoping something stuck. I'll probably end up tracking down the rest of the coins and the rest of the cards. Probably going to live without the silver coins, although I'll, I might try to track down the Chris Chelios because, you know, that's the guy I collect. Um, hey, if it's your favorite player, then go right ahead. I mean, there's there's no shame in that. No. Yeah, I guess it's a, it's a pretty easy set to come to. to At least the base set, you know, like the, the, the mm -hmm. one per box cards with the silver logo and the one per box silver coins you know that could that could become kind of a pain to to put together oh definitely but to be honest there's so many online that if you want to you can probably pay 50 bucks and get all of the silver nickel coins it, it, that'd probably be more than enough you, it, because most of them go for just like a couple of bucks mm -hmm. um online mm -hmm. it's uh and you know the brass coins you could probably find those i, I you know what I, I need to go to italy and bury them in in like a, a burlap bag somewhere on like some archaeological site and let some archaeologists like dig them up and think they're gonna find something amazing and they're like hockey coins what well you know because matt sundin he was the third emperor of the batman era uh <laughs> well, that's true actually it's written it's written on the back of his card instead of his statistics so right. you can read it all, all about it right there all right. Well, uh, I think that's it. Uh, I think I've I think we've done this to death. So thank you for listening to our podcast, and hopefully you'll catch our next one. For more hockey goodness, follow us on Twitter at Puck Junk.